is I want to make sure I'm just not the scaredy cat. I want to hear if you got some phobias too. Okay. No, you the scaredy cat, but yeah, I think. Shut up, man. <laughs> and I ain't never even been in a fire before, man. You know what I'm saying? Like, I but something like I like, and it's not really nightmares, but sometimes I'll just be sitting, scrolling through my phone, just tripping out or whatever, and then it'll pop in my head like, uh, huh. What would be my escape route if this place blew up? <laughs> <laughs> my mind just, I don't know, bro. And I don't know if that's part of the PTSD or being in, in war I think, or whatever. I think so, because I'm mm. kind of clowny, but I've never heard anybody have a phobia of just spontaneous combusting of, of the building. <laughs> <laughs> uh... Okay. Hey, welcome, welcome back to the I'm Just Saying podcast where we say what we mean and we mean what we say. I'm Dean Hashim. I'm Kyle Ellis. Welcome back, everybody. Welcome, welcome, welcome. You already know. You know what I'm saying? I'm just saying the home of the NFZs. And if y'all don't know what that is, that's the No Fear Zone crew because this is the No Fear Zone. Be part of the No Fear Zone crew and community by hitting that subscribe button, hitting that like button. So we go up in the algorithm, up, 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 up. We got to go up because we dropping some science on them. You know what I'm saying? Some real info. Yeah, absolutely. And we definitely appreciate it, everybody. We've been getting a whole lot more comments. Uh, on the podcast so we appreciate that keep it coming uh what's going what's been going on man today dude we're gonna hit into something that's quite taboo on a show that prides itself on being the no fear zone today we're going to talk about fears and phobias bro yeah here we go okay <laughs> <All right. laughs> And the reason I and the reason I did that, man, is because I feel like as I get older, I get a a lot more leery about stuff now. It's like I'm starting to get more paranoid about everything. And it's crazy because Regine peeps it out more than anybody because she's around me more than anybody. You know, we was at the ice cream parlor the other day. And this is one of my phobias, or I guess it's a fear of phobia, whatever. And it's people with rashes, like like near me. Like I don't know if they're gonna break if it's if it's contagious, whatever, whatnot. The woman was scooping our ice cream, and she had a rash from here to here. I'm talking about it looked like it was it was one of them flaky, juicy rashes, though, my man. You know what I mean? The flaky, juicy joints. You know, because some of her. Some of her rash flakes, like she, you could have got some extra seasonings rash on top flakes. of your ice cream. Rash flakes, yeah, really? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> extra seasonings, man, from the flakes. And so I'm looking, and I'm like, uh, babe, is is that rash contagious? Like, is that? And then she's like, oh man, you're always paranoid. It's all right. It's not contagious. She just has a skin, whatever, a skin problem or something like that. And I'm just looking like, oh, uh, yeah, she might have a allergic reaction or something. You think, got, you think she got the bubonic plague or something? <laughs> I didn't know what it was, bro. But that's what I'm saying. She was. She said, "Man, um, it seems like as you get older, man, you're getting more paranoid. It's like you have more phobias." So when she said that, I'm like, uh, I, I was kind of like trying to, you know, you know, act like, you know, uh, she was telling me some BS and that I, I, I was trying to deny it, but. In actuality, I came home and I thought about it. I said, damn, I, I, I do got phobias of a lot of stuff. And then anytime I have a deep thought, what comes next? We need to do a show about it. Okay? Okay. Okay. Because my thing is, I want to make sure I'm just not the scaredy cat. I want to hear if you got some phobias too. Okay? No, you, you the scaredy cat, but yeah, I think- Shut up, man. <laughs> I think, yeah, everybody got phobias, even if they don't want to admit it or not. Um. And they don't always make sense, I guess. You know what I'm saying most of them are irrational. You know what I'm saying <laughs> like there's right. no, like there's like there's no way. Like I know people got like a fear of sharks or something. Like you know what I'm saying, when are you ever gonna be around a shark? Like you know what I'm saying, I mean, why do you even yeah. have that fear? I mean, 
Yep. Yeah, that's I mean, real I, stuff. I feel you. But I'm saying everybody got them, I guess. But uh, to everybody else, other people's fears be sounding crazy. You be like, what? yeah. Like, no, and no, really, no, you no. can't trip out on nobody because you don't know what's in their head. Like, okay, for instance, let me let me show you. Let me let me show you what I got. So you can kind of get an example of where we gonna go with this. Okay. So boom. So my first fear. Okay. Right. Besides and, the, the, the flaky, <laughs> the flaky rash. Uh-huh. <laughs> yeah, yeah, oh, oh, the, oh, the flaky rash is on there now, now. All right. By the way, become part of the NFZ crazy-ass crew. Subscribe, hit the like button. Okay, now let's get into it. Okay. One thing that I've been doing about 76% of my life um, is flying. Mm, I go back and forth to the Philippines, been back and forth to the Philippines about 50 times. All I do is fly, but so guess what one fly. of my phobias is? Guess what one of my phobias is? Flying. <laughs> and I fly all the freaking time, dude. But but that's that that gets to me, bro. Especially when I'm doing these long trips between America and the Philippines, knowing that I'm literally over the Pacific freaking ocean for seventy percent of the trip. Just, just hovering over the damn ocean. Yeah, but <laughs> the water is a whole lot softer than the ground is. <laughs> I would rather crash in the ocean than crash onto the land. I'm saying, how far? How far are you up Earth. in the air? 40, 47, No, how, how many feet? A lot. <laughs> like <laughs> a lot. That's between, the answer. That's between. your increment. Yeah, man. That's a lot. Just a, a gang. You know what I'm saying? Uh, <laughs> yeah, between thirty and thirty-five thousand feet usually on a commercial airliner. So Kyle, you talking that water is soft crap? Water ain't soft when you fall from thirty thousand feet. Okay, it might as well be freaking concrete, bro, big bro. <laughs> All right. If somebody pushes you, <laughs> somebody push you off a cliff. You want to fall into the water, or you want to hit the ground? It depends on how high the cliff is, K Blood. Dude, you hitting the ground is never gonna be an option. You saying you there's no, <laughs> there's, there's no there's no option that you were like, I'd rather hit the ground. Nah, it is nah. Bruh. Okay, okay. Now, I, I I understand what you're saying though, but and, but that's just but, that's growing up watching movies, saying watching plane crashes and stuff. Yeah. Just Cause technically more head. car. Technically, more cars crashed than planes. Oh, yeah. I'm saying, yeah. I mean, it's barely maybe one fatal airplane crash, commercial crash a year, if that. I'm saying, you hear about people dying every day in, in car crashes all over the world. So For sure. For sure, bro. I mean, and I, I think for me, really what it is, man, is I'm a freaking control freak, bro. I like to be in control. <laughs> yeah. You understand? Mm -hmm. I like to be not, not not only in control of my situation, but most of all in control of my person. You know what I'm saying? Like, and when you are when you are uh flying, you're basically at the mercy of whoever's flying and if they're good, if they ain't good, no control is in your hands at all. And I think that's the the root of the fear. You understand what I'm saying? I don't even know Maybe. if that's the root of the fear. Because if you a passenger in a vehicle, then you ain't you ain't got no control over that either. I know, but it's like I guess being on the ground is an everyday thing. You know, being up in the air that ain't no everyday thing. Yeah. Well, for some people it is, but I, I don't know, man. It's just that's just one of that's just one of them man right. let's see think, what you got what you got mm. well i mean just one more point i think mm. the big fear people have of flying is if you're in a big commercial jet and it crashes it's gonna be some horrific stuff <laughs> you know what I'm saying? man it's, it's, dude and it ain't it ain't no little thing i mean it's four or five hundred of y'all you know i'm saying it's not gonna be a pretty sight. So I mean, I, I understand. Uh, I, right. I feel you on the plane. And one more thing on that: when, 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 when I was doing the show or whatever, right? 
Dude, I flew back and forth between America and the Philippines, dude, so many times per month, right? Just to film, bro. And when they would be talking to me about it, they just, okay, yeah, yeah. And, 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 and you know, go ahead and, um, you know, confirm your flight and blah, 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 blah. Every time they said the word flight, I would feel a little, okay. Really? <clears throat> Don't worry. I, 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 I'll be on the flight. <clears throat> Uh huh. Well, I think <laughs> I always feel that. I think I've never had a fear of flying because I've been flying since I was like six months old. Like, I'm saying, damn. Yeah, you know I'm saying uh, when I was six months old, I was flying from Dayton to Denver. And, um, so I I just always remember getting on planes, and it's never been an issue. Got used to it, yeah. Yeah. So I, mean, I guess when you are introduced to something at a really young age it, it kind of I'm saying, alleviates you having any fear about it that makes sense man what you got what you got mine i've 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 laid myself on the line I've, I've i've bared some truth that i'm not mr dean hashim macho okay wait a minute man wait a minute i i gotta put on my african luck man how you how you let me forget that the power of Egypt. Okay. Sorry about that. Go ahead. Are you done? <laughs> He's like, right. are you done? <laughs> um, hmm. I think, honestly, one of my biggest fears, and I don't know why, mm -hmm. I didn't have this fear when I was smaller or younger, or at least I didn't realize that I had it. But I'm mm -hmm. Like I cannot. I knew that one already. Yeah, 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 yeah. For sure. You always complain about that, man. Yeah, it's like um, probably not until I was like maybe in my thirties, like thirty something. I realized. I mean, saying I was watching something on TV, and it was like a underwater Jacques Cousteau type joint, and these divers were of course underwater and they went inside this little cave you know and I was just like watching it and they went inside the cave and my heart rate started going up and I was like, <laughs> like and it was making me I was like I can't watch this like what what is going on it's like and ever since then you know saying like uh I remember going to Cincinnati one time to uh, mm -hmm. the natural museum natural history museum down there and they had this exhibit for, of bats from all over the world and it's, mm. like, it's literally set up like a cave you know what I'm saying okay and you go in there and I was just like nah I'm gonna wait for y'all outside <laughs> 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 I don't know I don't, if I can't like it's weird but it's like uh, an elevator I have no problem with it um I was about to ask you that. What about elevators? You got that's something you gotta go on. Going into a small room or something, not a problem. It's I don't know what triggers it, but I think my worst uh, episode was saying, uh, of course you know I was a soccer player. I had yeah. a, a, a hip injury, so the team, mm. sent me, team sent me to get an R MRI. If you know, oh, dude, I already know you, bruh. I'm saying I'm glad that the it was a lower extremity injury and not upper extremity because mm -hmm. that had to put me head first in that machine. It wouldn't work. They would have had to sedate me for real. I don't know what. You'd be like, "Give me the hell out of here now, man!" Uh, and, I'm not and, trying to be in this machine. Yeah, they they put you in the machine, and luckily because it was my hip. I'm saying I was only. In the machine, I'm saying for like my waist down, like maybe navel or belly button down inside the machine. And even that messed with your head, uh, huh? Even, I, I was just like the whole time. I don't know how long it took. It seemed like forever. It might have been 20 minutes, half hour, or something. I'm in the machine, and it's making all the little clicking, whirring noises. Uh -huh. And I'm sitting there with my eyes closed, <clears throat> like just breathe, just breathe, just breathe. And the nurse is like, "You're right." I'm like. I couldn't even talk. Not I really. Just, I was just like, I'm saying, I'm, I'm, I'm trying to be cool. I'm, try, I'm trying. I'm saying, it's a nurse. I'm, I'm trying to be cool. I'm saying, not act like I'm. I'm. I got this fear of phobia. Or I'm saying, so I'm like, 
I'm saying she can tell something wrong. Bruh, with but dude, you I'm got sure. claustrophobia bad, and I'm gonna tell you something I peeped about you. Sorry. Okay, now now it's a friend to a friend. Uh, here we go. And I'm gonna hit you with something, and I never brought this up to you. So of course we're gonna bring it up in front of thousands of people on YouTube. Okay. When you came to my crib when I was living out in Cebu, do you know <clears throat> I had to close the door to the in the room that you were in? You every time I walk past, the door is kind of open a little bit. I'm like, dude, I, and you had and and you had your female companion in there with you. And one time I went past the door, the door, and you kept it like about this much open. I'm like, uh. Why this dude just don't close the door? And I ain't gonna lie, man. I, I maybe I'm tripping, but one time I went past the door and I heard something like "Oh, Kyle" or something like that. I, like, I don't want to hear that. Shh. Are you serious? Me close the damn door. Really? Y yeah, really. Now I just said it in front of everybody. Now you even even bedrooms you got a problem. You keep the damn door open. Yes or no? No, actually I don't. I'm saying just that, at my that... house, huh? Honestly, I think. You know, I mean, honestly, I think that was uh, kind of coincidence. It might have been her. You know I'm saying because I've never had an issue with with having 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 to have the door open or anything like that. But it's that was a winky dink. I think it was. You know I'm saying, but uh, nah, I've never really had an issue with having to have a door open or or anything like that. Um, I think we need to get T-shirts made that says, "Oh, Kyle." Them would go. The old Kyle t-shirts, man. Okay, I digress. I <laughs> His really, facial expression. I'm going to hit you right now. <laughs> Bro! I'm telling you. NFZs, the, no, the, the old Kyle t-shirts will be available on the website soon. Okay, let's move on. You know, and you know, I'm, I'm that's gonna be the theme of the show. I'm gonna say that like at least three more times during the show, man. So just get ready. You want to keep going? Yeah, we're gonna keep going, but uh, I'm biting my, I'm biting my tongue because we, uh, I'm trying not to get demonetized. So I'm saying, uh, I'm gonna let you slide. Don't do that. it. I'm gonna, I'm gonna let you. Let you slide on Don't that. be messing up our channel, man. You know, what I'm saying? you right. see, I've been a good boy. I ain't even cussed or nothing. Now I get. I get a little risque, but I'm, I ain't doing no four-letter words, none of that stuff. Like you said, man, right. just freshly got monetized, so we ain't trying to mess that up, man. Um, yeah. Okay, I'm going to hit you with one. I'm going to hit you with one, bro. The house burning down. Dude, that Fs with me, man. Really? And I ain't, listen, and I ain't never even been in a fire before, man. You know what I'm saying? Like I put something like I like, and it's not really nightmares, but sometimes I'll just be sitting, scrolling through my phone, just tripping out or whatever, and then it'll pop in my head like, uh, huh, what would be my escape route if this place blew up? <laughs> <laughs> just, my mind just, I don't know, bro, and I don't know if that's part of the PTSD or being in in war. I think, whatever. I think so, because mm. I'm clowny, but I've never heard anybody have a phobia of just spontaneous combusting of the, of the building. <laughs> <laughs> uh, okay, I mean, it is what it is, so. I mean, you know, when we first moved here to this house, I noticed that there are bars on all the windows, right? Mm -hmm. And and you know, you know they they do that for safety and stuff like that to make the tenant feel more secure, whatever, whatever. Right. And when I first moved in here, I said, like, "Oh, okay, that's cool, man. We got a big old gate. We got bars on the, on the windows or whatever. Can't nobody get in or whatever." But then um, when I thought about a fire, I said, "To hell with these damn bars on the window. I'm taking I'm taking bars off at least one of these windows." Because if can't nobody get in, that means your ass, what, can't get what? Um, See, you don't want to um, finish the sentence because you know it makes sense. If, if they can't get in, your ass can't get out. And if both doors door are obstructed, door. if, both, if doors, both doors, both doors, bro, but, but, but peep out how the house is set up. 
both doors to go out are on the same side of the house, bro. So if that side of the house is compromised, I'm screwed, period. And I think about stuff like that, bro. Oh, you best believe um, the bars on my bedroom window, I removed. Okay, because I'm gonna hop, skip, and jump my behind right out that window if it go down. Okay. You got too much time. Cont <laughs> <laughs> no, man, I'm just cautious, bro. Just bro. That's me. I'm just, dude, when I go to a restaurant, dude, I sit in the back where I can see everybody and the exit every time. That's me. That's a good point. Whenever I go to a restaurant, I have to face the door. Exactly. Uh, See? <laughs> well, I mean, that's just being a, a moment of real honesty here. Living in America, you never know what is going to pop off. Oh, my God, as bro. Of, yes. As of right man. now, yes. it's November. <clears throat> over 600 mass shootings <sighs> in the United States this year. So, I mean. God be with those families. Our prayers go out to you. And we hate to hear stuff like that, man. That that's horrific, horrific. It, it, it is, that's just an, an astounding number. Um, it's just it's horrible. Um, but yeah, I understand that because I have to face the door. I have to see what's going on. Whoever's coming in and out, I gotta peep them. So I'll tell you. Yeah. Yeah. Um. All right. Since you had kind of a I ain't gonna call it silly because this that's that's something that affects you but something man that, something that other people may think that i'm crazy for i'm in and out of a lot of businesses each and every day mm -hmm. and i get on a lot of elevators okay i have a mm -hmm. fear of dropping my keys down the elevator shaft when i'm getting on or out <laughs> <laughs> I don't know because I'm not the money that happened to, and of course, oh, word? When, you have, when you have your key rings in, it, uh, it it's probably gonna have your house and your car and yeah, for sure. There. And <clears throat> there's like a gap between the elevator and and the floor. You know what I'm saying, sure is. I know somebody who dropped their keys down there, and ever since then, I always have that fear. Like, mm, let me put my keys in my pocket before I get on this elevator. They're going right, man, because to get them keys back, man, you're going to have to call the damn fire department. Yeah, National fire Guard. Department or... <laughs> <laughs> no, <I'm Right>. <laughs> it ain't going to be an easy find. Okay. No, they're going to have to call maintenance. They're going to have to go down the elevator shaft. <laughs> and... and the whole time, yo, yo behind sitting there looking stupid like, I'm right, dropping. Man. Yeah, you can't go home. You can't leave. Like, yeah. Ooh. Side note. What's that? Side mm. note. When I went to Turkey, when I went to Istanbul earlier this year, mm -hmm. why did I leave my camera bag in the taxi and got out the taxi and do the golf? Oh, he's and like, oh, jackpot! That was the most stressful, probably four or five hours I can remember. Like you got it back? I got it back. You know what I'm saying. Oh, that's um, what's up. At least dude was I honest. Mean, I had my three. I had three cameras. Um, mm -hmm. My drone, my keys in this bag. So I mean, I'm in, I'm on the other side of the Atlantic Ocean in another country. Yeah, yeah, and, exactly. And if I don't get these keys back, I I can get into the house, no problem. I can get keys made for the house. But I have a German car. I literally have to go to the nearest mercedes dealership prove that the car is mine is yours exactly and they have oh, to have man. the key fob sent from germany so it would be two or three days for it to be fedexed <sighs> so at this so basically my car will be sitting at at the airport you know what I'm <laughs> for that long and then I, I gotta find a way to get home and when I went to Istanbul, I flew out of D.C. And D.C. is three hours mm. from here. So basically, I was yeah. to fly back to D.C. I'm saying, do all that with the dealership. I'm saying, go home for three days without my car. 
a three hour trip to the or how long it's home. I'm saying, once I get the key, go back to the airport, get my car, go back home, I'm saying, this would have been like a week long, I'm saying, ordeal. Simply because, mm-hmm. I'm saying, I left my, I, I'm saying, left my camera bag in the back of the, the taxi. So how did how did you end up getting it back? Like did did you have dude's number or something like uh, what? Basically, we um, I had to walk like we had to walk like a mile before we could get another taxi because it was in the middle of a, the a busy intersection or whatever busy I'm saying, mm. place. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. So I'm saying we finally ended up getting a taxi, and this was the coolest cab driver in the world. The dude, dude basically saved my life. He basically, Man. he basically, you know I'm saying, he took us to the hotel. We got all set up and everything. He called the taxi company that does the airport runs. You know what I'm saying, and talked to the dispatcher there. You know what I'm saying, and luckily the the cab driver was an honest dude. And he, when he went back to the airport for his next run to pick up more, more <coughs> or whatever. He left my bag with the dispatcher, so I'm saying basically, mm. to, so we had to go all the way back to the airport, I'm saying, and, and get my stuff. So, I'm saying, um, now I, maybe I, I if the, now, um, now look, I maybe left. if the camera, look, check it out, maybe if the camera was in there, he might not have been so honest that day. Okay, I don't uh, know. Was, nah, that's, that's what I'm saying. It was three cameras. It was three cameras in there. Oh, the cameras were in there. Yeah, it was three. I have three oh, yeah. Well, he, well, he, well, he, he a good dude. He, he's super honest, man. Yeah. Yeah. Because them cameras is worth how much? A lot. I'm saying probably <laughs> that that bag alone was a good five thousand dollars worth of stuff in that bag. Woo! So, man. um, yeah. That's so, a blessing. That's a blessing for and, sure, bro, and, bro. And dude didn't even he didn't even open it. I'm saying everything was just I, as I packed it. I'm saying. So, that's dope yeah. to know that there's still some honest people in the world bro you know what i'm saying absolutely that's and, dope and, and yeah i gave both of them i'm saying the, the taxi driver that took us back and the uh, taxi driver that i had originally left the bag with i left them a really big tip I'm saying. I good was, man I was good so grateful i'm saying mm-hmm. i was just stressed out to ruin my whole trip i was I'm saying so stressed and the whole ordeal took maybe four or five hours and, and and really, when I think about it to this day, I'm still just so happy that it worked out. Man, so. Yeah, I agree with that, man. Giving them that nice tip, man, because you know, people being honest, man, is really something for yourself between you and our creator. And you know that you know wherever you go after this all of your honest deeds that you did you're going to be rewarded for it but it, it it's even better when you're rewarded on this plane on right here you know what i'm saying and people t- show you that they appreciate you for for being for just being a good person because there's so many you know scandalous people out here when you meet somebody that, that that really genuinely helps you out and is honest it's refreshing dude so that's awesome man. yeah absolutely and that's dope 10 minutes so we got 10 minutes dang see we be we, we be running our g, our jibs yeah. <laughs> and it goes so. quick man um all right all right all right all right all right um we already went past we already told you i kind of got a phobia of people with, with with big rashes not little rashes just big rashes that's kind of like flaking off and stuff like that and you know hey man Honestly, I'll be so paranoid of it. When I see it, it kind of makes me itch. Like I start itching like, like damn, like do I got that? I get home, be, be examining my skin. Like, man, did yeah. I get something wrong? They, they call that psychosomatic. You know what I'm saying? Psychosomatic? Yeah. Okay. When you, uh, when you see something or hear something or just experience something and then you then start, start checking yourself like, like, I'm like, crazy as hell, man. I'm crazy as hell. We can move on to, to one of yours because <laughs> we, cause we like, ain't got that much time. But yeah, man, I'll be tripping on that. That's how this whole, whole conversation started for this show is that that situation there with the rash. <sighs> All right. <sighs> um, no. <laughs> <laughs> you stupid. I think this next one um, is something that a lot of people 
have a fear of, mm. but they won't admit it. And they may not even understand that they have it or understand mm. why, but for the longest time, um, I don't even know what it would be called scientifically, but basically it's a, a fear of success. Like, you have all these hopes and dreams, and then the closer you get to them, you start second-guessing yourself, start doubting Ooh. yourself. Like, like, Ooh, that's deep. Like, do I want to do this? Is this... You start saying... For whatever reason, you start <clears throat> coming up with excuses why you're not going to... Why you can't do this, can't do that. And really, it's, you're, you're afraid of what the success might bring, I think, because maybe you're so used to your current situation... <clears throat> That you, oh yeah 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 you, yeah you're, you're more comfortable with your current situation than going into the unknown of, of finally achieving what you are have been have been searching for or looking for so um, I love that one too and that's you know what that's a good one to end off with because I want to say something about that all right everybody who challenges their self in life you will reap a reward in the end step out of your comfort zone because in order to achieve things you have to create your own universe your own destiny we 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 strongly over here in the no fear zone believe in manifest destiny yeah you got to visualize it definitely because right if you can't picture it you can't you can't achieve it without picturing it first so exactly unless, unless you can picture it in your head how you want it how it's going to be you can't really achieve it because you don't know what you're what you're striving for you don't know what the end goal is the law of attraction is real y'all attract to you what you want in your life no matter how much it scares you no matter how much you fear the situation no matter how far out of your comfort zone your goals may be because I'm going to tell you now, if you don't go for your goals when you're 50, 60, 70, 80 years old, you're going to be sitting on the porch regretting it, wishing yeah. that you would have had mm. the courage to do it. And that's what the No Fear Zone is all about, guys. Absolutely. So once again, welcome NFZs and, and new NFZs. Yeah, absolutely. Um, that's, a, that's a good thing to end this podcast with. Um, yes, sir. Yeah. Let's, let's just end it there. That was, that was a nice positive. He like, man. Uh, 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 you said, you say, uh, you, you, uh, what they, what they say, you, you, you took the words right out of my mouth and walked a mile in my shoes, baby. That's all we need to say. We gone. <laughs> right. right. Hey, y'all. man. <clears throat> uh, thank you, everybody. Uh, hit that subscribe button. Give us the thumbs up. And most importantly, hit that bell because so much content on YouTube. We want you to get notified every time we upload a video. So, to some real people talking about real things. Right. Okay. So, yeah. Peace, everybody. <laughs>